Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to the Bar Mitzvah of Jack Person. There he is. I'm along here along with Rabbi Hai. We'll introduce ourselves in a minute, but we're going to get warmed up and uh, just ease into our worship service this morning uh, by singing together a very simple song. The words are Yai and lie couldn't be easier so please now and all morning long please join or afternoon depending on where you are or evening because i see someone has tuned in from england across the pond so um wherever you are please join in us with join with us in singing and in praying this morning it's so much nicer when we all do it together so here we go Shalom, everyone, and welcome. As Steve said, we are so glad to be here with you this morning, celebrating with Jack and his family as he becomes Bar Mitzvah. Uh, we celebrate his becoming Bar Mitzvah this morning. I am Rabbi Emily Hyatt. Uh, this is, I think he's this on your screen, who knows? This is Steve Steve Brodsky, our soloist and musical director here at Temple Emmanuel. And below me, I think you probably know these guys if you're watching the Person family and Jack, our star of the day. Um, a few things before we get started. Um, we are, uh, we're so happy to be here with you, even in these circumstances. I don't know how many of you would have been able to make the trip to Denver, but oh boy, is it wonderful to have you with us virtually this morning. For those of you not in Denver, if you're watching our eyes go periodically wide and like this, it is so windy here. I'm watching out my window in front of me. Like the, tr I feel like the trees are coming down. So um, that's our weather report from Denver in case you needed to know. Um, at this moment in our service, I would usually tell you um, that you should turn off your cell phones and that you should introduce yourself to the person next to you. And likely that is a weird request given that you are all at home. So I'm gonna ask you two things. The first is join in. If you are familiar with our service or not, and you just love the melody and you wanna sing along or read along or say amen or stand and sit as we do, please do. Um, we will invite you to rise and to be seated spiritually or physically. We know how strange it is to be praying uh, at home. Do what feels right to you. And the last thing is, I'm in my office. Steve's in his office. I imagine the persons are in some sort of dining room, living room situation there. These are places we use all the time. Let's take a deep breath and make them holy spaces for just a little while. 
Jack, take your deep breath. Because these spaces that we sit in with our screens are now our sanctuaries for just a little bit of time. And so with that, we begin our service the way we begin every service we do with moments of gratitude uh, for the bodies, the souls, the minds we have that allow us to come together like this and pray. So join with me together as we pray these words. My God, I thank you for my life, body, and soul. Help me to realize that I am someone new, someone who never existed before, someone original and unique in the world. May I be fully present to this awesome day. May my body and my soul be ready to do your work, unifying and strengthening one another, linked and renewed daily by your breath. Baruch ata Adonai, rofei chol basar umafli la'asot. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. We recognize that not only are we physical beings, but we are also spiritual beings. Each of us has been given the gift of a soul, the breath of life has been breathed into us, and as we awaken each day, we give thanks for that nishama, our soul. And so we say, Elohai nishama shenatata bi tahorahi, God, the soul that you have given me is a pure one. So we have said thank you for our bodies. We have said thank you for our souls, our spirits. And finally, we thank God for our minds, for the ability to learn. In a little bit of time, Jack is going to read from the Torah for us. He's going to teach us words of Torah, and we will have the opportunity to process that information, which we do not take for granted. And so we say together uh, at the beginning of this experience, the blessing over the study uh, of Torah. You can join with me. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kitshanu Bamitzvotav Vitzivanu La Asok Bedivre Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And as we wrap up this initial first section of our service, our Birchot Hashachar, the blessings of the morning. We sing words of praise. You might not think that the word hallelujah is a Jewish word, but it's totally a Jewish word. It's a kind of a contraction, three Hebrew words jammed together. Hallel means praises, lu is two, and yah, of course, is one of the many names we have for God. So we sing hallelujah. Everything that has breath should praise God. Hallelujah, 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 sing it with
Okay, we have started with our gratitude. We have warmed ourselves up, gotten ourselves ready for this moment of prayer. And with that, it is my great honor to introduce Jack to lead us in prayer. We rise as we are able, either physically or spiritually, for the Barhu, our call to worship. Eli Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Aolam, Yotzer Or Uvore Hoshech, Ose Shalom Uvore Et Hakol, Hameir La Art Vladarim Alacha Brachamim, Uf Tuvo Mechadesh Bachol Yom Tamid Maase Vore Shit, Ma Rabu Maasecha Adonai, Kulam Bachochma Asita, Mala Haart Kinyanecha, Kit Barach Adonai Eloheinu, Al Shavach Maase Yadecha, Vaal Maore Or Sheasita, Yefarucha Sela, Or Hadash Alt Yon Tair, Veniske Hulanu Mahira Laoro, Barucha Ta Adonai, Yotzer Hameorot. God, inspiration and guide for all. You have spoken in a thousand tongues for us to hear. In every land and every age, your children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one, unifier of humanity. We give thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sages of Israel. 
and joyfully we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live on in our minds and their passion for righteousness stir in our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of your truth. Baruch ata Adonai, Habucher be'amo Yisrael be'ahava. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Malchuto, Le'olam Va'ed. You may be seated. Please join me in chanting the Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavcha v'chol nafshcha v'chol meodecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'eva asher nochi metzavcha hayon al levavcha v'shinantam levanecha v'dibartam bam b'shivtecha b'vetecha uvlachtecha v'aderech Uf shok pecha, uf kumecha, uk shartam meot, ayadecha, ve hayuet hutafo, bein enecha, och tavtam, amazizot betecha, uvi sharecha, le man tis karu, ve asitem et komis votai, ve atem kedoshim, le lochechem. Ani Adonai Elohim, Asher Hotzeit Yehem, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, Vachiot Lachem, Lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohim. Sing the song of men and women, joined in understanding and respect. The song of God's miracles an earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of a lance once ravished by war, now quiet and content. Her soldiers home to leave no more. The song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. Yai la 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 yai la 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 yai la 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 yai la 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 yai la 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 mi chamo chaba eli madonai mi chamo Bakodesh, Narati he lord o Sefele, Narati he lord o Sefele. Rachadasha, she bechuke ulim, the simcha o Svat Hayam, Yachad kulam hodu, behim behum venyam. Adonai Moch Leon Amored Adonai Moch Leon Amored Amored Rock of Israel Rise in support of Israel and redeem Judah and Israel as you promised. Our Redeemer, Adonai Sivaot, is your name. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael. Blessed are you, Adonai, who redeems Israel. We continue with the Tefillah. Please rise as you are able, either physically or spiritually. Adonai sefer taitiftach ufiyagi tehila techa 
Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth will declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, v'elohei avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Elohe Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah, Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor v'hanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Bekonei Hakol, Vizocher Chasdei Avot V'imahot, Umevi Geula Lifnei V'neichem, Lema'an Shema Be'ahava, Melech Ozer, Umoshia Umagin, Baruch Ata Adonai, Megin Avraham, Ve'ezrat Sarah. Atagi borli alamadonai, Mechaye hakoata rav lechoshia, Mashiv haruach umarid hagashem, Mechokel chayim bechesed, Mechaye hako berachamim rabim, Saomek no flim verofe holim, Uma tir rasurim. Umekayem emunato, vi shene afar, vi hamocha baogivurot, umin domelach, melech me weed, umekaye, umats me achishua, when emanata the chayo hako, barochata adonai, mechaye hako. Nikade shachim cha pa olam. Kedishem shmakdishim o tobish me maro. Pakatu voya neviecha. Vikara se alze ave amar. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Adonai tseva oat. Meloho haaretz. Kirvoto. Adir Adirenu Adonai Adonenu Ma Adir Shimlecha Bacho Haaretz Baruch Pevod Adonai Mim Kolo Echadu Eloheinu Hu Avinu Hu Malkeinu Hu Malkeinu Vehu Yashminu Baruch Amav Ve'enei Kochai Ani Adonai Elohechem Yim lo chadonai leolam, Elohai tzion, Ledor vador, Hallelujah. Ledor vador nagid golecha, Unetzach netzachim kadush tacha nagdish, Veshivchacha elohinu, Mimpinu lo yamush, Leolam vaed. To all generations, we will declare your greatness, and for all eternity, proclaim your holiness. Your praise, O God, shall never depart from our lips. Blessed are you, Adonai, the Holy Sovereign. Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh. Jack, thank you so much for leading us in prayer. That was awesome. We take a moment now for silent prayer, for the words that we have not yet said that are in our hearts and minds. And we will come back together in just a moment for a prayer for peace.
Ose shalom bim Roma. Uya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bim Roma. Uya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bim. conclude this beginning part of our service, we arrive at our Torah service. And in these moments of introduction, I actually want to tell you about one of our Torahs that we have. Um, and if we were in person today in our beautiful chapel uh, at Temple Emmanuel, I would take this Torah out, but you'll see it in just a second, not quite yet. And I would tell you its story. And it's a good story. So I'm going to tell you anyway, even though we're not with that specific Torah in person. Here's the story. This Torah, this particular Torah comes from the city of Kolin, which is in what was the former Czechoslovakia. And we have records of Jewish people living in Kolin all the way back till the 1400s at least. And life for Jews in Kolin was much like life for Jews in most of the other um, European cities nearby. Sometimes things were really great and it was amazing and beautiful. And sometimes things were not quite so easy and they were not quite so good. But our story really begins in 1939 because that is when during World War II, that is when Hitler and the Nazis reached the border of Czechoslovakia. And up until then, in recent history, the Jews in Kolin and in Czechoslovakia had had an okay life. They had access to most um, of what the rest of society had access to. But in 1939, things began to change just a little bit. They lost access first to things like social opportunities or perhaps certain promotions and jobs, things like that. Uh, and then they began to lose some of their other rights and accesses in society. Um, they lost the right to things like medical care and um, jobs at all, and then food and freedom. And in 1942, things really changed. That is when Hitler and the Nazis reached the city of Kolin. And when that happened, two things happened. 
The first, Hitler was building a museum. It's not the kind of museum that we go to where we honor and respect things that we might only see in a museum or where we go to learn. It was going to be a museum uh, to the Jews, to this people that Hitler had managed to wipe out. His hope was that it would be all that was left of the Jewish people. And so um, the Nazis under Hitler's uh, instruction were taking all of the things that they found in Jewish communities, all of the furniture from synagogues and the Judaica and the ritual objects and having them shipped to warehouses. This one was particularly in Prague. And that is where all of those things would be stored until this museum was built. So that's the first thing that happened is that Hitler had all of the things from the synagogue in Colleen shipped to Prague. The second thing that happened was that the people themselves, the Jewish people in Colleen and around it, were also sent away to concentration camps. Now, our numbers are not perfect. We don't have uh, the best records, but as far as we understand, there were about 420-ish Jewish people living in Colleen proper, and then maybe another 2,200-ish Jewish people living in the surrounding smaller towns. Every single one of them was sent to a concentration camp. And at the end of the war, the best we know is that there were 16 survivors. Now, interestingly, all of that furniture, the ritual objects, the Judaica that was sent to Prague to be stored until the museum was built, never made it there. The best we can guess is that it was somehow intercepted and it was smuggled out of Czechoslovakia and it ended up in the basement of a synagogue in Zurich, Switzerland. And that is where it stayed until 1988. In 1988, Rabbi Stephen Foster, the Rabbi Emeritus of our congregation here at Temple Emmanuel in Denver, was in the process of building a chapel at our synagogue. Uh, we have a big giant sanctuary and we needed a smaller, more intimate place to pray. And so he was in the process of designing this chapel and he was reading a magazine and he saw in the magazine an ad asking if anybody wanted this furniture. It was a Jewish magazine asking if anybody wanted this furniture in this basement in Switzerland uh, of this synagogue because it wasn't being used. And Rabbi Foster just felt something in his gut and he got on a plane and he went to Zurich. And he bought that furniture and he had it packed up and shipped back to Colorado. And let's see a picture of what our chapel looks like now. What you see in front of you is our beautiful chapel, the Ark, which is the big green um, structure with the doors where the Torahs live, the Ark, the Ten Commandments above it, and the parapet above that, the Torah stand all the way to the left, and the Stender, which is the Yiddish word for a chair with a table in between them. There's two more Stenders in the room, a candelabra and a uh, chandelier. All nine of those pieces came and were restored um, and now are a part of our chapel here in Denver. Now, um, here you can see a close-up of our of the of some of the furniture in the next picture. So you can see how, just how beautiful it is. And now I'm going to tell you something really interesting, which is that Rabbi Foster, who is a smart man, thought, I wonder, because this is an ark that holds Torahs, if there is a Torah that came from the city of Colleen. And so Rabbi Foster called the Westminster Synagogue in London, where 1,564 Torahs were sent after World War II in all varying states of, um, of usability and, and, uh, and destruction, sadly. And it turned out there were three Torahs that came from the city of Colleen. Two had already been placed in congregations. One was left. And so if we look at the next picture, you'll see the ark doors open. And the Torah that's on the right that has the map on the front, that Torah was taken out of the same ark that you see right now in 1942 in Colleen in what was Czechoslovakia. And in 1988, we put that same Torah back into this same ark in Denver, Colorado, because that is what we do. We preserve our tradition however we need to. And so as we take down this picture and we prepare to pass this Torah 
uh, from generation to generation. Today, we do it symbolically. We don't have quite the opportunity that we um, might have to pass that Torah physically from Jack's grandparents to his parents to him because we are all in different places. And so instead, but just as beautifully today, we pass down a blessing to him, full of the beauty of that story and all of the tradition that we have and value that we are carrying with us and giving to Jack today. And so I'm going to call to the screen at this moment, all of Jack's grandparents, Andrea and Cabot Thunem, Julian Person, Cantor Neal and Sarah Nay Newman. And I'm gonna call Jack's parents, Jeremy and Jerry Person and Sylvia, his sister, and as everybody comes up onto the screen, we are going to prepare uh, for all of us to pass this beautiful blessing and legacy down to Jack in this moment. And we are going to start with Andrea, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Our hearts are one on this joyous day as you commit yourself to a life of Torah, a life we pray that is filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. We pray that you will grow each day in compassion for the needy, in concern for the stranger, in love of all people. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, bless you on your becoming our mitzvah. May you grow with strength and courage, with vision and sensitivity, and may you always be certain of our love. We wish for you to be a person of character, strong, but not tough, gentle, but not weak. We wish for you to be righteous, but not self, but, but not self-righteous, honest, but not unforgiving. Wherever you journey, may your steps be firm and may you walk in just paths and not be afraid. Whenever you speak, may your words be words of wisdom and friendship. May your hands build and your heart preserve what is good and beautiful in the world. May the voices of the generations of our people move through you and may the God of our ancestors be your God as well. May, may you, you know, know that, that there, there is, is a people, a rich heritage to which you belong, and from, from that sacred place, may you, you are connected to all who dwell on earth. earth. May, may the stories of our people be upon your heart, and may, may the grace of the Torah rhythm, rhythm dance in your soul. soul. We are gifts and we are blessings, we are history in song. We are hope and we are healing, we are learning to be strong. We are words and we are stories, we are pictures of the past. We are carriers of wisdom, not the first and not the last. Lador vador nagi god lacha. Lador vador, we protect this chain from generation to generation. Lador vador. These lips will praise your name. Vador, Vador, these lips will praise your name. And so with that, we move into our Torah service. And it's our tradition here at Temple Emmanuel that we don't know each of you, we have no idea if you have any familiarity with the Torah scroll or with the idea of the Torah that we are about to engage with. And so it is our tradition that we do just a little bit of introduction in case this is your first time or in case you can't remember. 
hard to say. So let me tell you a little bit about the Torah um, itself and the Torah scrolls that we usually read out of. A Torah scroll is written by a scribe, a very specially trained calligrapher called a sofer or a soferit. It takes about a year and a half to write an entire Torah uh, by hand with a quill and ink. Think Harry Potter, like feather and ink on parchment. That is the treated skin of a kosher animal. And it takes that long because there are 304, 805 letters in every Torah and every single one of them has to be correct. So can you imagine if you were one of these so fair or so fair and you're writing a Torah, you are a year and a half in, you're on the last page of the book of Deuteronomy and uh, you make a mistake. What would you do? I'll tell you. The good news is it's not the end of that entire Torah. You don't have to start from the beginning. Why? Well, first of all, imagine parchment and ink. If you can picture it, the ink comes onto the parchment in a bubble until it dries when it sort of sinks into that, um, that parchment. So if the mistake is made and the sofer or sofer goes, oh, I've made a mistake. They just take like a razor blade and scrape it off and they can write the letter again. However, if either the letter is already dry or it occurs in a word that contains the name of God, we wouldn't want to scrape that off. And so that piece of the parchment, it's called a cloth, that would be taken out and it would be buried in a Jewish cemetery. We call it a Geniza. That is where we put our holy documents um, when we can no longer use them. And those cloth, that, that cloth um, individual piece um, there of the parchment is really important because I told you it was the skin of a kosher animal and it would be a really big, I don't know, deer if we didn't have sections of the parchment. Now, in a second, you're going to see, um, go ahead and put up that picture of the text so I can tell you a little bit about what you see here. This is a picture, not of what Jack is going to be reading, but a different part of the Torah. And you will notice that there are all kinds of decorations, little crowns coming out of the letters. And if you look up at the top, you'll notice some of the letters are kind of stretched out. They look longer. And if you're familiar with Hebrew, you might also notice that there are some dots and lines that are missing from this text. So first, let me tell you about what's extra and then I'll tell you about what's missing. What's extra here, those decorations, uh, some say are just decorations. Some say they're to justify the margins, those long letters, you know, it's not word. You can't like just line up your margins automatically. You have to sometimes stretch out a letter. But some say that there is deep mystical meaning inside of all of those crowns and inside those different looking letters and that we're supposed to read into them and learn something from them. Now, what's missing is vowels and cantillation marks. In Hebrew, we don't have written letters that make vowel sounds like we do in English. Those are extra symbols that are added that tell us whether it should be an ah or an e or an ooh, and those don't uh, live in our Torah text in a Torah scroll. We also have cantillation um, marks, which are Torah trope. Those are musical notes. In a minute, you'll hear Jack chant, and you will not be able to, um, in, he, he in this Torah text does not see the notes reminding him when to go up and when to go down. And we take them out of the Torah because we really enjoy torturing our B'nai Mitzvah students. Just kidding. Uh, we don't. Sometimes we do, but this is not one of those ways. The Torah actually came. The Torah scrolls came without those. We didn't take them out. And that is because the Torah predates general literacy. What do I mean? Not everybody used to know how to read. And so there were very few people in a community that knew how to read publicly from the Torah. So they didn't have any of those helpers, the vowels or the notes. Those came later when we had a printing press and publishing and we had more books and more people learned how to read. And that will become important in just a moment. So the last thing I'm going to tell you is that um, the thing you see right in the middle there that looks like a hand with a finger and it's pointing, that is called the yod. It means hand very creatively named. And we do that because uh, we don't want the funk from our hands on the Torah. We don't know what we're touching or what kind of oils or dirt we might have. And this is so fragile and precious to us that we don't want to smudge the ink um, or change it or make it dirty or in any way take away from it. So we don't touch the inside of the Torah text. We just use that yad, that pointer finger to keep it safe. So that was a lot of information. Um, but with that, we want to introduce now back to the screen, Jack, who is going to tell us about the specific part of the Torah that he is going to read for us today. Um, and so we're going to bring him back on. 
go ahead. The Torah portion for this Shabbat is Chaye Sarah from the book of Genesis. Though the name means the por- uh, though the name of the portion translates as the life of Sarah, it actually begins with Sarah's death. In the section that I will chant, Abraham seeks to purchase the cave of Machpelah as a family burial site. Ephron, the son of Zohar, owns the land, and so Abraham negotiates with him for the purchase. I will be reading from Genesis chapter 23, verses 1 to 16. So I just told you that people didn't used to be so literate, right? They didn't used to know how to read. And so what evolved in our tradition is two parts to every Torah reading. The first is the reading itself, which Jack is going to do for us in all of these sections of Torah reading this morning. But the second is that we give out the honor of the blessing over the Torah, um, over each of the Torah readings to people that are important on a special day or in a moment in the community. And so we call that an aliyah. And each of the sections is called an aliyah. And we give to those who are going to do the blessing in aliyah. And aliyah means to go up spiritually, physically. This is a moment of holiness. And so um, the, this evolved in, in two parts. Um, and so for our first blessing this morning, for the first blessing over the first section of Torah reading, it is my honor to call to the screen uh, aunts, uncles, and cousins, Betsy, Mark, and Alana Rosen, David, um, Fitterman, and Lynn, and Craig, and I think Alec might also be there, uh, person. So we'll get them all on screen, and then when you guys, hi Alec, he is there, and uh, when you guys are ready, you can go ahead and do the first uh, blessing over our Torah reading today. Baruch Adonai Hamarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Benatam Lanu Et Torah To Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vayichu Chaye Sarah Me'a Shana Fa'esrim shana v'sheva shanim shane chaye sara v'tamo sara b'kirya arba hi chavron b'eretz kena'an v'yavu avraham is pod usara v'liv kota v'yakam avraham m'a Vayakum of Rome, may all pane may tow, vay the bear, all benechi, lay more. Gravitosha vanochi, imachem, Tanu, li, Bahusa, kever, imachem, Vek bera, may tea, meal fanai. Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to interrupt you really quick. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Jack is also actually going to also read the English, and our, that's our tradition here. He's going to read English, and then we're going to do the blessing. But you're so on top of it. Hold on one second. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. Such was the span of Sarah's life. Sarah died in Kirat Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham proceeded to mourn for Sarah and to bewail her. Then Abraham rose up from among, uh, from upon his dead wife, and spoke to the Hittites, saying, "I am a foreigner living for a time among you. Sell me a gravesite among you, that I may bury my dead here." <laughs> Amen. Amen. It happens all the time to us that we forget that we, it's usually me, I forget that we're going to do the English. So um, we just, in our tradition, we like to um, make sure that we understand what it is that we're reading. So with that, 
for our second Aliyah, we say thank you so much to aunts and uncles and cousins. We give air hugs uh, since we're far away um, and send all our love and kisses to Jack as we introduce to the screen um, for our next Aliyah, all of the grandparents that Jack has. We have Cantor Neil and Sarah Nay Newman and Julian, uh, Julian Person and Andrea and Cabot Thunem. And so all of them are gonna come onto the screen with us as we prepare for our second Aliyah. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Vaed Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Vaed Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Baru Nikol Hamid Benatan Lanurata Baruch Adonai Amen. By Anu Venechet, Abraham, Lay Moralo, Shema Inu Adoni, Nasi Elhim, Ata, Betochinu, Bemifhar, Kevarinu, Kevor, at Metecha, Ish Mimanu. At Kivro, Lo Yichle Mimcha, Nigvor Maitacha, Vayakom Avraham, Vayishtachu Le Amhaaret, Liv Neche, Vayadaber Itam, Le Mor, Im Yesh, Et Nafshechem, Nigvor, Et Meti, Milfanai, Shema Uni, Ufigui, the Ephron ben Sochar, the Atenli, and the Ara Hamak Pela, Asher Lo, Asher Bigza, Sadehu, the Chasaf Mole, Yidna Nali, the Tochachan, the Ahuza Kaver. The Hittites answered Abraham, saying, Hear us, my lord. You are a mighty prince in our midst, for you are dead in any of our choicest graves. Not one of us will keep you from burning your dead by withholding a gravesite from you. Abraham then got up and bowed low to the people of the land, the Hittites, pressing them, If you really are willing to let me bury my dead here, and listen to me and entreat Ephron, son of Zohar, for me. I let him sell me the cave of Machpelah. He owns it. It's at the edge of his land. Let him sell it to me as an inalienable gravesite in your midst at the market price. Amen. Amen. Hugs from the grandparents to Jack. I know you wish you could be there and kiss him right on the head. And as we finish this Aliyah and move to our next one, to our third Aliyah, it is, oh, they're already there. How did, when did you get in there? Uh, I invite, <laughs> to, as they are already there, um, Jeremy and Jerry Person and Sylvia um, to do our third Aliyah. Go ahead. Baruch et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Venatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. The Ephraim Yoshev Betoch. Benechit Vayan Ephron Hachiti Avraham Beusne Venechit Lecho Bae Shaar Iro Lemor Lawaroni Shamaini Hasade Netati Rah Vaham Ara Asherbo Bach Netati Ha Lene Veneami Natatiha Lach 
kevorme tayaka, vayish tahu avahon, vifne am haaretz, vayadaber al efron, vayusne am haaretz le mor, ah, amita u shamaini, natati, kesef hasade, kah mimanu. Vekbera et miti shama. Ephron himself was sitting among the Hittites, and in the hearing of all the Hittites and all the town leaders, Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, all who entered the gate of his town, saying, No, my lord, listen to me. I am giving you the field, and the cave that is in it I give to you. In the sight of my people I give it to you. Go ahead, for you are dead. But Abraham bowed low before the land of the citizens, and in their hearing he addressed Ephron the Hittite. Oh, if only you would listen to me, I will pay the field's price. Take it from me, and let me bury my dead there. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, v'chaye olam nata b'tokinu, Baruch atah Adonai, no ha Torah. Amen. Amen. Jack, you're doing great. And you get to take a breath for just a second. Because we have a tradition now. We just talked about this idea of Aliyah, of going up in holiness. And as we are feeling quite a bit of that holiness at this moment, reading and chanting and hearing the Torah read together, um, we use that holiness to pray for those that we are um, thinking of today that are in need of healing. And so with that, we prepare to pray the Misha Beirach, the prayer of healing. It's our tradition that in between the two verses we pause, we will read a list of uh, names, those in our own congregation that we know are in need of healing. And then we will ask you to add in any others, any other names that you are thinking of today. You can type them in. If you are on Facebook, you can say them out loud wherever you are, and we will all hold them together as we pray for their healing. Mm -hmm. praying for Zachary Hoffman, David Karner, David Lustig, Natalie Mosier, Corey Franklin, Jeff Cohn, David Goldenberg, Stuart Myers, Jerry Butter, Catherine Plus, Vicki Adams, Jean Silber, Scott Grant, David Horowitz, Michelle Handler, Violet Franks, Roger Simon, Phyllis Schuldberg Johnson, Scott Englander, Shanti Hazan, Robert Tucker, Jennifer Brynan, Lynn Pollitt, Lynn McLaughlin Cromar, Cynthia Friedland, Dana Huss, Robin Huss, Betsy Ippel, Devorah Miriam Bat Yehudit, Joanne Wilner Potts, Howard Rosenberg, Glenn Richardson, Leonard Streer, Deborah Alenikoff, Bev Rulo, Trudy Dock, and Flory Katchen. If there are others for whom you are praying today, feel free to say those names out loud or type them into the comments box so that we can hold them with you. As we say, Baruch Ata Adonai Makor Harefua, blessed are you, Adonai, the source of all healing. <laughs> Tenu, 
mikor habracha lavotenu. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. And so with all of those people in our hearts and minds, we return to our Torah reading and to our fourth Aliyah, which is a special Aliyah. And so we are going to bring uh, actually one of our sets of grandparents onto the screen for just, um, oh, we're going to bring all of our grandparents onto the screen because we're doing our fourth Aliyah. Um, and so as all of our grandparents come onto the screen, we consider the moment of bar mitzvah, right? Of acknowledging that Jack is becoming bar mitzvah this moment, even though yesterday was his birthday, right? Yeah. And he already turned 13. So technically he's already a bar mitzvah. We signify that right now. It wasn't when he had his birthday. It wasn't when he put on his suit and tie. Well, just a suit this morning. You wearing a tie? I can't tell. Too small. Uh, no, no tie. Good man. Uh, it wasn't when he put on his talit this morning to pray. It wasn't when he led us in prayer or the first time he read from Torah. We acknowledge him becoming bar mitzvah in the moment that he says the blessing over his own Torah reading. And so it is a very big deal. And with very, very much excitement that we call him to the Torah for the very first time as a bar mitzvah, I'm going to call him in English. And then we have the privilege of having his grandpa cantor, Neil Newman, call him to the Torah in Hebrew for the first time as a bar mitzvah. And so it is my honor to call for his bar mitzvah aliyah, Jack Avner person to the Torah. Cantor. Ale, 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 le kabel le tole ha Torah, yamad, abachur le bar amitzvah, Chaviv ben Yaakov v'yochavet v'lea ha-revi'i chazak. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach le'olam va'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach le'olam va'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bachar banu miko hamim, venan tanladu et torato, baruch ata adonai, no tain ha torah. Amen. Elyan Ephraim, et Avraham lam, lemor lo. Adoni shemaini, el heretz, arba meo shakel kesef, Ba'ini uvincha machiv, ve'et mitcha kavor, va'yishma Avraham, al-Efron, va'yishko Avraham, le'Efron, et ha'kesef, asher diber, ba'ozne v'nimchit, or ba'me'ot shekel kesef, over la socher. Ephron then made his reply to Abraham, My lord, hear me. Land with four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Go for your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the amount of silver he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, using weights. Standard among traders. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher nantan lanu Torah emet 
וחיי יומם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. סימן טוב ומזל טוב ומזל טוב ומזל טוב וסימן טוב יהי לנו יהי לנו יהי לנו ולכל ישראל יהי לנו יהי לנו ולכל ישראל יהי לנו יהי לנו ולכל ישראל יהי לנו יהי לנו ולכל ישראל. יאק. מזל טוב. ביג דיפ ברדס. You're doing so good. And we are going to transition now from our Torah service as we uh, are so proud of you. We're going to give you a second to breathe and uh, get everybody situated on screen where we need. And what you're going to, what we're going to do now is participate in a secondary reading called the Haf Torah reading. Now, it may sound like what I just said was half Torah, but I didn't. <laughs> Haf Torah actually comes from the word taking, a, uh, taking leave or parting, and it is a secondary reading that we do from the Book of Prophets after our main Torah reading um, on Shabbat morning. Now, there's a lot of different reasons why we might read Haf Torah, and nobody really knows exactly what the origins are. Some say that it is because the Torah scroll, that big scroll that we looked at before, is really conspicuous. And at times when it wasn't so easy to be a Jew reading from the Torah on Shabbat, fulfilling that commandment, they read from the Haf Torah, which comes out of a book. It is a little bit easier to do discreetly. And that's where the tradition arose. Um, some say that it uh, was just um, a way to honor other parts of the Torah uh, and that there were um, different sects of Judaism that valued different parts of the Torah uh, differently. Regardless, every Torah portion has a corresponding Haf Torah portion that we read. Jax today is going to come from the book of First Kings. And um, in just a second, he will tell you all about his Haf Torah, and then he will bless and chant it for you. Jack, you ready? Let's do it. The Haf Torah for this Shabbat is from First Kings, chapter 1, verses 28 through 31. In this tale of political intrigue, King David is very old and near the end of his life. David's uh, sons Adoniah and Solomon are vying for the throne. David has sworn to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, that Solomon would succeed him ha as king, yet has never had never made that pr pronouncement publicly. Adoniah and a group of his followers begin to act as if they were already the new king. The prophet <coughs> intervenes by innocently asking King David if he had appointed Adoniah as king without telling anyone, in hopes of getting David to act and proclaim Solomon as the heir to the throne. David then calls Bathsheba to tell her that he will honor his vow. Baruch atah Adonai Elohinu melech alam Asher Bachar Vin Vim Tovim Varatsa Vadivrahim Hana Amarim Baamat Baruch Ata Adonai Habuchan Batora Uvrasha Avdo Vivisrael Amo Uvin Vieha Amat Batsedek Vayan Hamelch Davin Vayomer Kiruli Levat Shava Vatavu Lifne Hamelch Vitamod Lifne Hamelch Vayshava Hamelch Vayomar Hayanai Asher Pada et Nafshi Mikol Tsara Ki Kasher Nishbati Loch Baronai Elohe Yisrael Emor Kishlamo Venech Nimloch Acharai Vehu Yeshiv Al Kisi Tachtai 
כי כן אעשה היום הזה ותיכון בת שבע אפיים ארץ ותשתחו למלך ותאמר יחי אדוני המלך דוד לעולם This was King David's answer. Bring Bathsheba back. So she came back and stood before the king. David then took an oath, saying, As the Eternal lives, who has rescued me from every distress? Just as I once swore to you by the Eternal, the God of Israel, that your son Solomon would rule after me and sit at my throne, I will carry it out this very day. Then Bathsheba bowed low to the ground and paid homage to the king and said, Let my Lord King David live forever. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Tzor ko haolamim, Tzadik b'cho hadorot, Ha'el hana'eman, Ha'omer ve'oseh, Ha'mdaber m'kayim, Sh'ekol devarayv, Emet v'tzedek. Al ha'torah, Be'al ha'avodah, ביום הנביאים, ביום יום השבת הזה, שנתת לנו, אדוני אלוהינו, לקדושה ולמלוכה, לכבוד ולתפארת. על הכל, אדוני אלוהינו, אנחנו מודים לך ומברכם אותך, יתברך שמך בפי כוחי, תמיד לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני, ברוך הוא וברוך שמה, מקדש השבת. אמן. אמן. וואו. ג'ק, ג'ק, you are done with all of the singing and chanting that you have to do. So proud of you. Take a deep breath. Um, as we transition now into our next um, piece of our service, we are... In a moment, going to hear uh, for the first time in our service, Jack's own words. Um, so far, he has led us in prayer. He has chanted for us from the Torah and from Haftorah. Um, he has said blessings. He's read, read translations, but he has yet to teach us from his own brain, from his own words, his own heart. And so we turn now to our Devar Torah, which means um, a word of Torah. Jack is going to tell us what he has learned from his Torah portion and what he wants us to learn from it as well. And so um, I hand it back over to you. You have to unmute. I muted you for a second. Uh, and here we go. Shabbat Shalom. My name is Jack and my Torah portion is Chaye Sarah, which is in the book of Genesis. Chaye Sarah means the life of Sarah. However, Abraham is the main character in this Torah portion. This Torah portion covers three deaths, several marriages, and the births of several children. Each of these events happened to Abraham, but also to other people in the Torah portion. Some of the highlights include the death of Abraham's wife, Sarah, Abraham's grieving and then finding and buying a burial plot for Sarah in the cave of Machpelah, Abraham's directing his slave to find a wife for his son Isaac, how Rebekah was chosen as Isaac's wife, the marriage of Rebekah and Isaac, Abraham's remarriage, the birth of more children to Abraham and also to his other son Ishmael, and the death of Abraham and Ishmael. Actually, I think this Torah portion can be called Chaye Avraham, or the life of Abraham. What I've just summarized for you is the story of Abraham's life and all of the life cycle events that he goes through, from marriage to children to death, and then back to children and marriage and death. Maybe what this Torah portion is trying to say is that the events of our lives, whether they are happy or sad, are the moments that bring us the most spiritual fulfillment, or they give us the opportunity to find it. As I was writing this speech, I found that I too was spiritually satisfied during the process of thinking and writing this speech, and it helped me to realize how much meaning there is to find in our daily lives. 
Sometimes we think of satisfaction or fulfillment as something we can only get through money or material things. But I've learned that it comes from experiences that push us to grow. Abraham was pushed, was pushed to grow as he moved through his life cycle experiences. For example, as Abraham moved through the grieving process, though he goes on living, we can hope that the memory of Sarah was meaningful for him. And we know that when he died, his sons then went through the same process. And when Isaac and Ishmael buried their father, we saw that same part of the life cycle repeat. And the life cycle continued when Abraham was able to marry again and have more children. And we hope that he found spiritual satisfaction in raising those children. We know that there's little financial gain in raising children, no return on investment. But having kids is one of the ways that we can achieve spiritual satisfaction and continue the life cycle. One life cycle event that Abraham went through was experiencing the death of his wife and then going through the grieving process. What Abraham went through was really tough. He had to bury Sarah, but first he had to buy a plot of land to bury her in. Abraham knew that he did that he did the best that he could, given the emotional state that he was in. And maybe doing something really hard because he knew he needed to do it made him feel fulfilled. Abraham had to fulfill his duties of burying Sarah, which he may not have wanted to do, but he had to do in order to reach a sense of finality. This helped him move through the grieving process faster. There are many events in the life cycle that can touch us deeply or give us in great, uh, and give us great fulfillment, like, for example, having kids. Other non-monetary and non-material things can also do this, such as volunteer work. For some people, it makes them spiritually fulfilled to see those who need assistance get that aid, especially when they themselves are able to uh, provide the assistance. For them, helping others brings them the sense of fulfillment. Another example of something that can touch us deeply is getting a law passed or evoked that a community or group has rallied for that positively affects the community. This, again, is what happens when people help and work together to make their community better. These are all ways we can help people from our individual community all the way up to our country or even the world. This is directly tied to the Jewish value of kahila, which means community. It teaches us to do our share to make our community better, to stay informed, to vote, to be a good neighbor, to obey laws and rules, or to work or to work to change unjust laws and rules, and to respect authority or challenge it if necessary. But our tradition teaches us not to separate ourselves from the community. Making laws that positively affect the community is one way of practicing the value of Kehi La. So is volunteering. I invite you to join me in making a positive impact on your community by focusing on what makes you feel fulfilled, not just what makes you happy, because the latter will follow. I really like trains, and to show that, my mitzvah project will be volunteering at the Colorado Train Museum. The Colorado Train Museum is an open-air, non-profit train museum in Golden, Colorado, and it is a place that I really enjoy. I will also donate a portion of the gifts I receive this Shabbat, and they will go directly to this amazing place. I would like to thank my mom, dad, and sister. I'd like to thank my dad for always helping me when I need it, and for really helping me with my devar. I'd like to thank my mom for always being there for me and for listening to my Hebrew. I would like to thank my sister Sylvia for always finding a way to make me laugh. Lastly, I'd like to thank everyone at Temple Emmanuel who helped me, including Rita Dalkey for helping me learn my entire Torah portion, as well as Rabbi Hyatt and Steve Brodsky for help in directing the service this Shabbat. Last but not least, I want to thank everyone who is attending, including grandparents, cousins, family friends, Hebrew school teachers, and those that have a bar or bat mitzvah coming up. Thank you for coming. Oh, and Sylvia, here's my pizzazz. I will now conclude with a prayer of thanksgivings. 
Thanksgiving. Baruch ata Adonai, Elohinu melech haolam, shechichianu v'kiyamanu v'higianu v'zman hazeh. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. Amen. 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 Wow, Jack. Okay, now you're really done. <laughs> Take a big deep breath. Good. Take a drink of water and just sit back and relax for a minute. I get the great privilege of saying a few words to you. Um, first of all, wow, what an amazing job you've done this morning. It, it's now afternoon, but what, a, what an incredible job. And I, I said this to you the other day, there are very few students who of their own accord want to lead basically the entire service. Um, I sort of got the morning off here because you did a whole lot of things that normally I do, leading the entire Shema Uver Choteha section, leading the entire Tefillah section all by yourself. And I know that that was important to you, that that was a goal that you had set of something that you really wanted to do. And uh, you did such an amazing job with, with great confidence and um, just uh, your, your personality really came through in, in not only making the choice to do that, but in, in then leading us so beautifully. So thank you for that. Um, you know, your Torah portion is really amazing. It, it's on the one hand, the section that you read is, is kind of a little bit inane. It's about a guy negotiating to buy a piece of land so that he can bury his wife. And on the one hand, it could be like, what's the big deal? This isn't a particularly exciting thing. But we have a lot of these little instances in the Torah telling us about Abraham and the way that Abraham behaved. Starting, you know, from the very beginning uh, of the story when we meet Abraham and then continuing all the way through. Um, these small little acts of kindness or of righteousness uh, that Abraham performed. And, you know, in our tradition, we put Abraham up on a very high pedestal. We raise Abraham up as such a, uh, an important figure and a role model for all of us. Um, and it's because of all these small things that he does along the way, right? He, he runs to welcome strangers, even when he's in, in a lot of pain after his surgery. Um, he he uh, argues with God to save the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, where he doesn't really even have any connection or but but he argues with God about about saving the city for the sake of of only 10 good people or five good people. And then in this story, he he's trying to buy a grave for his wife and he wants to do it the right way. He wants to make sure that he pays the appropriate fee so there's no question that the the transaction was done properly and legally uh, and all of these little incidents little episodes in the life of Abraham add up one to another to another to make this really amazing great person that we that we hold up as a role model for ourselves and that's why I think this is such a great Torah portion for you, because you, Jack, are, are a, 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 an, an exceptionally kind and joyful and friendly young man. I've never, hardly ever seen you without a smile on your face, except earlier this morning when you were a little nervous. Um, you have a, a great a uh, wacky sense of humor, which I really appreciate. Um, and you are committed to working hard. And we all see, and all of the many people that are watching us online and participating in this service online can see your level of commitment and dedication to learning the material that you needed to learn, to leading us so beautifully, and to really stepping up uh, and, and doing such a great job. You talked about being part of a community, a Kehila Kedoshah, a holy community. 
And I know that there's a lot of people online watching this service from Emmanuel Congregation in Chicago, uh, where you used to live. Um, and when you came to Denver, you joined the Denver franchise of uh, mm. Temple Emmanuel. Um, and I know that your family was a big part of that community. I can see from the comments how much love there is in, in Chicago and in that congregation for you. And, um, and you have become a part of our community uh, over these few years that you've been in Denver. And we're so grateful for that and so excited to um, celebrate with you today and to watch you grow into the kind of person that Abraham was. Uh, a, a, an amazing role model and uh, an amazing um, person of character and of righteousness and a person who takes on hard challenges um, and 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 pushes himself to do things that are maybe a little outside the comfort zone but uh, that you in turn as you spoke about get a sense of of spiritual fulfillment from so I hope that today and every day going forward, you're really, really proud of the work that you've done and, and I know will continue to do. I look forward to learning with you many, many more opportunities to learn with you as we go into the future. Uh, and I know that you will make a huge uh, and important positive impact on our Kahila, our community. So Mazel Tov, um, it's been a great joy and pleasure to work with you through these many months. Uh, despite the fact that we never were in the same room at the same time, <laughs> um, all virtual, but uh, so excited for you and Mazel Tov. I, we have a bunch of gifts for you from the congregation that I can't um, give you today, but we'll talk about them a little bit. First of all, we have a beautiful uh, new uh, bar mitzvah certificate that I think we can put up on the screen for a moment. Uh, and this talks about how today you, uh, in becoming a bar mitzvah, you accept uh, the privileges and the responsibilities of being a Jew, committing to a life of learning, service, and deeds of loving kindness. And we know, Jack, that you take these things seriously and that you will, you will step into that role. And then the Hebrew on the left side says, La'asok b'divrei Torah. It's the words of the blessing that we said earlier in the service. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who commands us to engage with words of Torah. And the Hebrew la'asok, um, engage is a, is a poor and weak English translation. The word la'asok is so much deeper than just engage. It means to dig into, to immerse ourselves in, to, uh, to wrestle with and struggle with and uh, really embrace uh, these words of Torah. And I know that you have done that with your Torah portion and that you will continue to do that uh, as you grow into um, the next stages of your life. So we have this beautiful certificate. We also have for you a certificate uh, that shows that we've planted a tree in Israel. We can go ahead and take that down, Dan, thank you. Uh, we have planted a tree in Israel in your honor. Uh, and when we get you the certificate, there's a picture of your tree. So when you go to Israel, you can find it and, and water it. And no, not really. There's a zillions of trees in Israel that have been planted. But pl you should know that there's, you have a strong connection to the land of Israel. Uh, we also have for you uh, uh, a, go a goodie bag from Friedman Club Temple Youth Group that has a T-shirt and some stickers and some other goodies in there. And, and so you should always know that you have a home in our youth programming at Temple um, we also have for you a book uh, called Text Messages, not this kind of text message, but the kind of text message that you um, learn by studying Torah. And this is a book that's a Torah commentary for teens. Each of the four, four clergy, Rabbi Black, Rabbi Hyatt, Cantor Sachs, and myself will inscribe a personal message to you. Uh, uh, congratulating you on this amazing accomplishment. And last, we have for you uh, a Kiddush cup from our sisterhood so that you can begin to have your own collection of Judaic objects and celebrate many happy events through the rest of your life and a mezuzah that you can for now put on the doorposts of your bedroom, someday maybe a college dorm room, maybe your first apartment, your first home. Uh, so that words of Torah are always close to you. And whenever you come and go into the world and into your home, you will remember what it is that God asks of us, 
those 613 meets vote uh, are guidelines for how we are supposed to act in the world. And so you'll always remember that. And so, again, Mazel Tov, so proud of the work you've done and um, really, really happy for you. I'm now going to invite your mom and dad, Jerry and Jeremy, to come into the picture and to offer you some words of blessing. Jack, well done on your impressive performance. I, like no, yeah. I don't have to do it? You don't have to do it. Okay, You're that's going to make this much easier. <clears throat> Jack, well done on your impressive performance. As I told your sister when she became a bat mitzvah, you had many things working in your favor. The most important, in your case, being your own skill, drive, and intelligence. Assistance from an experienced and skilled team at Temple Emmanuel, and a mother who was vigilant about making you practice over the past several months. But having inherited my genes, you faced an impressive and nearly insurmountable obstacle. And anyway, in the moment, it was on you to perform, which you did so well. Now that we've reached one of these life cycle events about which you spoke so eloquently, this one being a little on the stranger and format side, <laughs> if necessarily so, I want to call your attention to some of your characteristics that will enable you to make your way through the world and effectively confront challenges that may throw up to you. To you. First, you are incredibly determined. We all, every one of us, have things about us that sometimes hold us back from being all that we believe in our minds that we can be. Sadly, many of us can't or won't overcome them. Not only is neither of those things true of you, but you insist on succeeding on your own terms and by, the, by way of your own formidable capabilities with no special favor from others. As you've many times said, if not in so many words, all you want is to be treated like everybody else, no better and no worse. Second, you're someone who at an early age and for many years now has known what he wants to do when he becomes an adult, in American terms, not Jewish. <laughs> We have no way of knowing well, you're, whether you'll continue down that path, but the ability to, find, to define a goal, take actions in pursuit of it, and stick with it is an invaluable skill. Last, you're a genuinely good person, always looking to do the right thing. This trait alone is as, is as or more valuable than any other you may possess. I can tell you with no small measure of certainty that it will guarantee that you enjoy the love and respect of others and in all likelihood, realize great success in all that you do. These traits have served you well to date and likely will continue to do so, but that may not come without, your, without effort on your part. There may be influences that come along from time to time in your life that can divert you from the path you're on and the person you are. Sometimes you'll know these when you see them and easily bat them aside. Other times they may come up on you slowly or silently and take you by surprise. In those instances, confronting the challenge may be difficult, but as someone who fundamentally knows what's right and what's wrong and has the traits I've spoken about, I have no doubt that you'll continue along the path of success. So enjoy this day, fully appreciate your achievement, and take a well-deserved break until Monday when you have to go back to Zoom school. <laughs> but know that life will throw you curveballs from time to time. Hello, COVID-19. <laughs> and be alert to them so that you can effectively <laughs> overcome them. I have no doubt that you are up to the task and mom, Sylvia and I will be there to support you and help you all the way. Yeah. Okay. Now we gotta get behind the mom. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I already got one. <laughs> More. No offense. Dear Jack, let's well, straighten you out a little bit. There you go. As we are here today in our living room, I am beaming with pride and I'm hopefully not going to cry through, <laughs> until I finish. You have led services beautifully and you read Torah and delivered a thoughtful Torah with confidence. 
you have brought a bright spot to our lives these last few months. Today, I would like to focus on the second half of your Torah, portion, Torah por portion. As you beautifully stated in your Devar Torah, this portion is full of life cycle events. We meet Rebecca in the later half of the Torah portion. If you remember in the story, in his mission to find a wife for Isaac, Abraham's servant devises a rubric to assess a good match or wife for Isaac. Much to his surprise, upon traveling to Abraham's birthplace, a young woman immediately came out and offered to draw water for him to drink, as well as water for the camels. This woman was Rebecca. Rebecca continued to be generous and show her kind nature, and she was deemed a good match. And she agrees to leave her family to travel to a place and marry Isaac sight unseen. She really was brave. I was, and I often think how trusting and adventurous Rebecca was in these times. There was no Google to check out pictures of the new neighborhood. There was no selfie of Isaac on Facebook, and there's no Reddit to read reviews of the local camel transit stations. <laughs> I bring up Rebecca because you share of some of the same traits. How so, you might be thinking. First, you are adventurous. You love a road trip, a satisfying hike, especially if there's a lot of stairs, researching and eating new foods, and armchair travel. You enjoy learning about new places, and there's a glimmer in your eye when you have a chance to ride a transit system in a new city. I know we all look forward to the day when we can travel and see family, friends, and explore new places again. Secondly, you too have embraced a new home. Just like Rebecca, you embrace our move enthusiastically. Behind me are two small torrents. One is from your consecration at Temple Emanuel, at Emanuel Congregation in Chicago, and the other is from your consecration here at Temple Emanuel in Denver. May you always be reminded of the wonderful friends and family who have each city. You have a lot of love coming from all over the world today. Third, you are a good host. As a child, you were the first to hug, usually a huge bear hug, any guest who came to our house for a visit or for dinner. As a maturing young man, we love seeing you with your friends and engage in conversation during a dinner party. We are so thankful you have a tight group of buddies who you can share your hours of time with, playing games, cards, watching outdoor movies, and taking walks and scooter rides in the neighborhood. May the friendships you have today only deepen, and may the new friends you always may and may new friends always be warmly welcomed with your very bright smile. We hope you never lose any of these traits, but they increase with their intensity over time. We love you deeply and are so proud of you today. <laughs> we almost lost him. Yeah, <laughs> down. <laughs> Our mitzvah down. Uh, what beautiful blessings and and things have being said about you, Jack. And I get to say just a few more things before we give you one final blessing and then conclude our service. And I just want to I want to just point out one thing. You know, people have said a lot about you today that was really special, um, but I think that your your Devar Torah today was more on the money than perhaps you even realize. In our, I think it was our second meeting, after I'd given you all this reading homework and you came home with these ideas, you came back and you told me about um, these life cycles and how they are so you were noticing that they were fulfilling. I don't know if your dad had told you that he felt that or if you had just noticed it um, because he had been through, you guys had been through a life cycle moment uh, more recently um, and um, had buried someone that you loved and you noticed about it, what it meant to have uh, participated in that. And as you were writing this speech about the beauty that comes from being able to participate in that, I felt from you the deepest empathy 
for what your parents had gone through, what your dad had gone through. And I think that you understood at a level that I'm not sure is, is quite like a 13 year old level, um, what it meant to be able to go through um, a death and the process of mourning. Um, and I was so impressed by the way that you sort of with your body language, and I don't even know if either of you noticed it, but in the moment when we were talking about um, what that must have felt like as you were writing this and thinking about uh, life cycles, you sort of leaned towards your dad and you just sort of supported him with your being, with yourself being there. It's an amazing thing to see. I don't know if, you know, in the way that you guys sit right now, you just support each other with your existence. It's a beautiful trait, Jack. And in addition to your ability to learn all of this and chant it and kick but honestly, at all of this that you did in your bar mitzvah in a weird time, and you did it with such a great attitude, you still felt the need to comfort your father, to be with your family, to support them. And I think that that is, it's one of the more beautiful things I've been able to witness. I don't know if I would have noticed it had we not been on Zoom, right? If there were all these other things in the room, but you guys were right in the middle. And I just saw you lean over toward him. And I hope that you continue to do that that you're there for the people that you love and uh, that they are blessed by you. This is usually a blessing for you, for you. But I think that as we discussed that in fact, you are a blessing. And so with that, I'm gonna invite um, Steve to come back onto this screen so that we can give you one final blessing this morning, the priestly benediction um, from the words of our Torah and the blessing that we give on behalf of God and our community um, in this moment. Of great, uh, of great meaning. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Jack, may God bless you and keep you. Yair Adonai panav elecha and may God's light shine upon you and be gracious to you. We say, Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha, may God lift God's face to you. And I hope, Jack, that you see God's face in the faces of your family, in our faces here on Zoom, big and in charge. I hope that you know how holy this is and that you feel that holiness and all of that godliness coming at you. And that it brings you the gift that we wish for you more than anything else in the world, the gift of peace. <laughs> And now we begin to move toward the conclusion of our service. I invite you all to rise either physically or spiritually as we join together in Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon ha'kol La'tet gedula li'otzer b'reshit Shelo asanu kegoye ha'ratzot Velo samanu kemishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu kahem Vegor aleinu kechol ha'monam Vanachnu korim umishtachavim umodim Lifne melech malchei hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu A little while ago, we passed down our tradition from one generation to the next in the form of that blessing. Jack's grandparents and then Jack's parents gave him a blessing that came from 
one generation to the next. But what we know is that that um, line did not just start at Jack's grandparents. There's actually so many people that aren't here, that couldn't be here, that are no longer with us, that came long before us, for whom we are so grateful for the gifts that they have passed down to us. And so we end our service, our final prayer before we conclude today is one of memory and one of gratitude. Again, um, for those who we are um, missing today and for whom um, we're so grateful for what they gave us as we are able to pass our tradition down today. And so on behalf of the person family, we are remembering today, great grandparents, Jerome and Sylvia Seiler, Jack and Jean Parker, Ada and Gerald Fitterman, and Ben and Florence Person, grandfather Martin Fitterman, and grandmothers Sherry Person and Susan Person. And it is with them in our minds that we prepare for the Mourner's Kaddish and I invite you, if you are not standing, to stand or sit according to your custom physically or spiritually as we join together in the words of the mourners' Kaddish. Yit gadal ve yit kadash shemei rabba, ve alma divra chirute ve amlich malchute, ve chayechon uvi yomechon uv chayedcho beit Yisrael, ve agala uvi zman kariv ve imru amen. Yehe shme rabba mevorach le olam ule alme almaya. Yit barach vish dabach vit paar vitromam vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal shemeda kudisha brihu. Le ela min kol virchata vishirata. Tush bachata venechemata da amiran ve alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya. Bahaim alenu va al kol yisra el vimru, amen. O se shalom vimromav, huya a se shalom, alenu va al kol yisra el vimru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say amen. O se shalom vimromav, huya se shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru ve'imru Amen I want to invite everyone to come back on screen now the entire family, grandparents, aunts and uncles cousins, everyone we have reached the end, and we're going to sing one final song, and then we'll take a moment where everyone will unmute you all, and you can all wish Jack a mazel tov, a congratulations, and give big hugs and kisses. We'll conclude by singing, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah. There's that word again, Hallelujah. Hava Nashira, let us all sing together a song of praise to God. Here we go. Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashira. May it be your will, God, that we 
continue this Shabbat full of the joy and the beauty and the love that we have seen in this amazing family that we get to learn from Jack, not just today, but as we continue on in this weekend and week and in our lives, we learn from him both in the things that he has said and in the things that he has done. May he be an example for us as we celebrate together with you, Jack, with your family. And we hope that all that we have learned today will help us to build a more beautiful world. And so we ask you, God, Tatsi Denu le Shalom. Help our steps be steps of peace. Tadri Chenu le Shalom. Help our paths be paths of peace. And we wish all of you a Shabbat Shalom. And let's all say Mazel Tov. Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing? I blew it, Rabbi and, oh, and Jack. I'm sorry. We 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 want we were the family wants to do kiddish. Oh yes. And mozi and yes. I just went right into the closing song and forgot about it. So Jack, will you please lead us in blessing the wine and sanctifying Shabbat? <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Borei pariha gafen. Amen. And I think you have a beautiful challah there. <laughs> Is it real wine or grape juice? Uh, it's grape juice. Oh, okay. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Hamotzi lachamin haaretz, Betei avon. Te avon, amen. <laughs> and now everyone can unmute. And on the count of three, we're all going to say Mazel Tov to Jack. Here we go. One, two, three. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Amazing. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. All right, Jack, we are all sending you such big hugs and love. Mazel Tov from us and from your whole family. And a pleasure. Oh God, I love everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, everyone.